this morning I want us to look into a few uh, aspects of John chapter 1. This is the, uh, this is the book I'm meditating on, uh, the gospel according to John. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life. And I want you to underline the word life. In him was life. And that life was the light of all people. I want you to underline the word light. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He, only, he came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, which we are. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, nor of husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father full of grace and truth. You can underline the word grace and truth. Four things that I want to leave with us as we begin our year together. Life, light, grace and truth. You know, when you think in terms of life or when we think in terms of life in the ministry, life in this fallen world, uh, maybe life in our own immediate departments or ministries or families, uh, it really depends where we come from, uh, you know, how we define life to be. Uh, life means, dif you know, different things to different people. If you ask a teenager, life is completely different to him. If you ask an old person who's dying of cancer, it's completely different to him. Uh, I know my brother-in-law passed away uh, battling cancer for about nearly six years, and life took a big turn for him. So many things changed for him from the time he realized he had cancer. And, you know, as we begin our journey together, our journey of following Jesus uh, in the year 2013, we have to take, take some time and understand what is really the source of our life. Where does life really come from? Where does, what does life really mean? Uh, I just spoke, uh, my last preaching assignment was in our church for the Christmas uh, evangelistic program. Uh, it was called Love Came Down. And I was talking about the message of Christmas there. And I spoke about the, the, the heart of Christmas really is in John chapter 3 verse 16. He came, he gave his only begotten son so that you and I could have life and life eternally, eternal life. The source of life is God himself. And the Bible, John begins to say to these people, his audience, who were talking life philosophically, he tells them, hey guys, life is not just some something out there mysterious and secret and supremely uh, uh, mystical but life is in the very person of Jesus Christ Jesus is our source Jesus is our life you know oftentimes you and I get to see people who are lifeless even though they are alive we get to meet people who are absolutely in the prime of their age full of energy, full of strength, full of muscles, full of, uh, uh, you know, everything, and yet are lifeless, with no passion, with no determination to go somewhere or do something. It, it seems like their life is aimless. And it becomes sad when you find people like that in the church, or even so in mission agencies, where people are lifeless, passionless, aimless. Where does life really come from? You know, it comes from Jesus because Jesus is the life. Amen? Our inertia, that motivation that we need in life comes from Jesus Christ. 
So as we begin this year, I don't know how your 2012 was. I don't know what context you're coming back into Bangalore. I'm not sure about your context. No matter what is holding you back, I want you to know you can give yourself to Jesus because he is your life. Amen? He's our life. And let's, let's get back and let's ignite, let's be stoked, let's allow the Holy Spirit to tap into that passion so that we can live this life to the full because that's how God designed us to be. But this life is the light of men or light of mankind. This life produces light. This life is not just, you know, controlled by oxygen. We're not born of human will. We're not born because two people had sex. We are not born because of natural descent. We are born of God. And it's more than biology. It's more than oxygen. It's more than just those chemical things running in our, in our body. Our life is because Jesus said, I've come to give you life. And that's Zoe, the life of the Holy Spirit living with us. And when you and I walk with that life, that's coming from the Holy Spirit, that life brings clarity to our next steps, to our ear. Light is all about guidance, isn't it? There's so many things we can talk about light as far as light is concerned. But to me, as I was meditating on this chapter, light dispels darkness. Light brings clarity. Light brings peace. You know, it is, it is told that if you want to create excitement in the basement like this, have lots of light. <laughs> when you have lots of light, you walk in and you feel like something is going to happen. <laughs> you know, and if you go in a dungeon, you know, in a, in a, in a dark, uh, very, yesterday my, I took my family out for dinner and we went to this restaurant and I, you know, we sat there for three minutes and we said, forget it. I feel so depressed here. <laughs> And we went to a smaller restaurant full of light, isn't it, Vicky? Full of light. And we said, I, you know, Vicky said, I like the atmosphere here. It was very cheap, actually. It was much cheaper than the restaurant we went to. But the difference was that was dark and this was full of light. You see, you and I perhaps need God's light in our lives right now. Some of us need his direction, clarity for what we want to do in the very immediate 2013, but perhaps even in the next phase. Vicky and I have been connecting the dots that God has been, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, doing, orchestrating. You know, we believe that God orchestrates our lives and we respond to God. And we have been going through a series of events that took place in our lives for the last five or six years. And we began to see a dot there, a dot here, a dot here, a dot here. And we've been saying, God, would you show us the light? Would you show us how to connect these dots and understand what is it that you're trying to get our attention to? Amen? A lot of us are led by our own ambition. A lot of us are led by our own fears. A lot of us are led by our own plans. A lot of us are led by our own logic. And John was writing to a very logical audience, someone who celebrated not just mystical experience, but they were also celebrating a cerebral, a brain kind of environment. The best scholars, philosophers came from the Greek world, right? And, 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 and light, logos, the word, all of this is, is interconnected. And, you know, we need to stop as missionaries, as people called by God, we need to stop being led by our logic. Because I think sometimes our logic is not good enough, although it's a gift from God. I want us to know that the previous Sunday was called as the Epiphany Sunday. That's what we celebrated in our church. It's a Sunday after Chris, uh, the first, Chris, uh, first Sunday after in the year is called the Epiphany Sunday, which is to remark, uh, to, to mark the encounter 
people had with Jesus when he was born. And also it marks the end of the Christmas Advent season. You know, wise men came to Jesus and they were changed. You know, when you encounter the light, you're changed. You may come to Jesus through logic because there are people who studied. You know, I know of many people, Josh McDowell and uh, who's the guy who did a whole series on uh, the case for Jesus, the case for faith. What's his name? Lee Strobel. Yes, I heard him live in Saddleback. I heard him live. I forgot his name. Now, now this guy, he actually logically came to Jesus. The wise men came mystically to Jesus. I don't know if it was astrology or astronomy that led to Jesus. One of them. <laughs> or a combination of the two. They saw a star and they came to Jesus. But when they met Jesus, they were no more led by the star. They were led by God's angel. Amen. When they came to Jesus, people come to Jesus with all kinds of experiences. Some come to Jesus because they're depressed and somebody gives them a message of hope. Some come to Jesus because they're logically completely convinced that Jesus is the Lord of their lives. Some come to Jesus because they realized through a vision, through a mystical experience that Jesus is the Lord. A lot of my friends from Hindu backgrounds have come to Jesus because they saw a vision of Jesus Christ. But once you come to Jesus, you're no more led by visions alone. You're no more led by logic alone. You're no more led by what led you to Jesus Christ. You're led by the light of Jesus that comes to you every day. Amen? So sometimes it could be a rationality. Sometimes it could be a word. Sometimes it could be a friend's advice. Sometimes it could be a prompting of the Holy Spirit. But you need the light of God every day. But the light of God cannot come to us if the life of God is not in us. If you and I don't have a relationship with the life of God in our lives, we will be confused. In other words, if you're always confused, maybe you need to reevaluate your life. Are you with me here? If you're always confused about your next step, you really need to fast and pray. I'm not apologizing for saying that. I think you should evaluate your life. If you're always led by fear, and if your decisions are made by monetary, monetary benefits, if your decisions are also always led by what you can get or what you cannot get, or what is right or wrong, it, you know, if you're always being led by, by emotional fears, then something is wrong somewhere. Are you with me, my friends? Radical Christians, radical believers, radical followers of Jesus are led by the light of God. Even though that path that God is showing us might be difficult. But when you take that plunge, when you take that step, when you and I obey God, no matter what he tells us, when he sheds the light on our lives, he gives us the grace to endure it. Amen? He's full of grace. This life is full of grace. Grace, you know, is such a huge you know, discussion of the Bible. I mean, grace is Jesus personified. Amen? Grace is deep. If you want to meditate deeper in grace, of course, read the Bible. But, you know, along with the Bible, read the book, What's So Amazing About Grace? Is that the one? Philippians here, right? Yeah. And there's another book called Grace Awakening by Chuck Swindle. These are great books. When you read, you begin to understand grace is much more than what you and I assume it to be. God is gracious. Our God is gracious. So my friends, the challenges that you have in this year, maybe you've always walked in the light of God. And because of that, you're carrying a heavy challenge ahead of you. The Lord gives us the grace to endure it. We received an email from the landlord of this building increasing the rent by 40%. 40%, 37 some percent, I calculated. 
from the from the current money we're paying and we were concerned about that but we were not confused <laughs> we were concerned but we were not timid you, you understand now for you know 30, 37 person is a lot of money to 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 muster up and so the leadership team met they told me what their final price is and we prayed about it we looked at the email a couple of times maybe a few days actually and then wrote an email a very gentle email and we got a beautiful reply so it's not that bad <laughs> see God gives us grace because I know right now with the rental culture of this area the this place is deserves to get the money that he is asking us to pay but we just cannot do that and we had couple of email exchanged and the price has reduced a little bit a little bit it is still a challenge and I know it will be a challenge especially to the training department but God is full of grace amen he gives us grace where he leads us you know there were two kinds of storms that came to disciples storms that came to them or, or two kinds of storms that came in the Bible storms that came as a result of disobedience I'll give me an example the storm that came up when Jonah was running away from God remember that it took a storm to wake up Jonah to come back to God right uh, but storms also come when you follow God when you obey God an example there would be Jesus said you go you guys go ahead I'm gonna I'm gonna follow you later I'm gonna catch up with you later so they go ahead and there was a big squall a big storm and in the middle of that storm they saw a ghost walking on the water <laughs> remember that story Th that's what they thought they never expected Jesus could walk on the water <laughs> you see as as they saw Jesus coming closer Peter realized, oh my goodness, it's Jesus, it's our Lord, it's our teacher. Jesus, can I also walk? You see, Jesus walks in the middle of our storms, especially when you and I are obeying and then inviting storms to come into our lives. Those kind of storms are fun. You know why? Because we get to walk over it. <laughs> we get to enjoy it, you know, be troubled by it for a while but then enjoy it after some time because Jesus walks in the middle of our storm he gives us the grace to help us to walk on the waters and even when we're walking as we go down under the water he lifts us up because he's a gracious Jesus Christ amen and this Jesus that we're talking about is full of truth full of truth my friends if the secret if there's one secret of living, it should be a secret of living by the truth of God. And by truth, I don't, I don't just mean the Bible, although this is the truth. Because Jesus is the way, the life, and the truth. And the name of God is the word of God. Do you know that? The Bible says, Revelation 19, 13 says, the name of the Lord is the word of God. Right? And, and we need to live by this. But what I'm trying to say this morning is beyond this experientially in the sense, how do you know, how do I know that I'm really living by truth? Well, I know it when my life becomes truthful. When my life becomes truthful, you know, I think it's John Maxwell who said, he who thinks is a leader and turns back and sees no one following him, he is only taking a walk. <laughs> he who thinks is a leader and turns back and sees no one following him is actually only taking a walk. He, only think, he who thinks he is living by the truth and actually is not living a truthful life is only reading his Bible. Are you with me here? You see, how does truth manifest? If Jesus was truth, which he is, and if he was only logos, as the Greek philosophers were talking about, then it's only a rational discussion up in the air. You sit in some square and you're talking about some doctrine, 
and you're arguing or defending or doing your apologetics and you're having a great intellectual stimulation but it hasn't changed your life you know the exact references where it says forgive one another you discuss all about forgiveness but then when you go back to your place you're finding it difficult to forgive someone that actually hurt you you see living by the truth Jesus being full of truth means he is truth personified his truth experience he is truth manifested he is truth demonstrated and when you and I take him receive that full truth in our lives our lives should progressively become truthful right there should be no room for dishonesty there should be no room for ambiguity in that matter there should be no room for you know guile now I'm not saying become perfect today and that's why I said progressively should become truthful things I used to say I say them no more remember that Sunday school song things I used to do I do them no more things I used to you know uh, look at I look at them no more my life should be guided by truth we should be referred to people as being the people of the truth amen I want to kind of wind up here as I challenge us this morning as YWAM Bangalore to live by the life of God to allow that life to produce enough light so that we don't live a confused life if you're confused for a long time you really need to go to God you really need to encounter this God and meet him you know you need to have that experience of epiphany where you encounter you know the Greek expression of epiphany really is you know in Hindi I can the best expression I can give you is a chutki mein sab kuch badal jayega just in one click things just change for Moses it was the burning bush he encountered God and things just changed for him it can it can happen in just one minute your life your perspective everything can change may we be guided by grace of God may we give grace to one another may our lives become truthful may we truly live by principles that reflects the truth and not just do some behind the curtain planning and somehow get away from people just to get what we want that is disgusting to the Lord are you with me here this morning so let's close our eyes and let me just invite you to make that prayer of commitment I know there will be more words that will come to us this year and I'm not saying this is a a word of the Lord for us for the entire year I'm simply saying these were four thoughts that came to me and I declared this to myself not even to my family that this year is a year of new beginning I'm asking the Lord Lord I want to experience you in a very fresh way I want this you know you know for, for people like like me who've been in missions for such a long time it's you know every year is the same after a while <laughs> you have projects to do, you have reports to write, you have meetings to attend, you have you know so many things to do and I can predict my calendar because my calendar is already full till July next year actually actually even till September some portions of July to September quarter so I'm like oh God it's already so predictable <laughs> I want freshness I want I want this year to be so new so vital so vibrant that I will to be drawn closer to you to enjoy your life to enjoy your light to enjoy your grace to enjoy your truth make me like that Lord and would you pray that prayer something like that this morning let's close our eyes